I was asked by Andrew to give a talk on lightning address. Raise your hand if you've heard of a lightning address before. Oh, sick. Wow. Sick. Love that. Um, so I figured I would just walk. So I did a similar presentation to this uh, in August when I announced the protocol, the lightning address protocol, and what it is, what it does. Um, so I figured I would recycle parts of it and then um, you know, show some pieces of what's already happened since then. I'm just going to put this here so I can. OK, OK, this is going to be tough. I'm just going to hold it, whatever. It'll be a little harder, but cool. So I'm going to walk through uh, essentially what the process is for making payments in Lightning right now, OK? So bear with me as I only have one hand and I don't have that. So yeah, do you? OK, cool. So basically, any any lightning payments that you've ever encountered at this point, you come in. There's a there's an amount attached to it. Right. Yeah. There, there's an amount attached to it. Oh, okay. Uh, there's an amount attached to it, and there's a uh, the QR code, right? And basically, the the approach is you scan and you receive some information, and you hit pay, and that's the end of the flow. Um, and this is fine. This is great, right? This works. So you can get any lightning wallet, scan it, and it works, and it's just perfect. Um, and wh why does it work uh, so well? It, the first thing is the QR code. The QR code, right, you transfer a lot of information from devices. So there's a lot of information inside of this QR code. And by scanning it, your phone receives all that information like that, right? Um, so QR codes are great for sharing data across different devices. Um, QR codes can contain a ton of information. So I will show you what's actually in the QR code here. And there's a lot of information in there. Um, and you can actually combine QR codes, right? You can, if you've ever used uh, PSBT or anything like that, um, you can combine QR codes and they can flash one after the other and the data can, you, you can essentially move a lot of data across different, different um, devices. Um, but they're also QR codes, right? And they're a mental burden. Every time you want to make a payment on Lightning, you take out your phone, you open the, your app, you scan to the, you switch to the camera, you scan the QR code, you receive the information, you hit confirm. Right, and that happens every time you make a payment. And in a world where everything has Bitcoin in it, that doesn't work, right? Imagine you making hundreds of payments a day. You can't take out your wallet a hundred times and do that same flow a hundred times. Uh, so QR codes are great, but in a world where you're doing multiple payments per day, not just a single e-commerce payment, you're doing hundreds of, of payments a day because it's how the, the future is going to go. Um, we need to improve this. So. Uh, at Zebedee, one of the things we focus on, uh, we are a, a Bitcoin gaming company. Um, so we provide uh, infrastructure for uh, Bitcoin, sorry, for game developers and game studios that want to introduce Bitcoin into their, their you know, games and, and game environments. Um, but myself specifically, I focus on the Bitcoin side of things. Uh, so on the Lightning Network and essentially how do we provide better UX, better experiences for uh, gamers, but also for anyone using Bitcoin and, and Lightning. Um, so what the hell is in that QR code anyways, right? So if I were to get an invoice, um, which looks just like this, it's a bunch of strings of, of characters, and I go to this decoder thing, I can see that it's a lot of information, right? So I know that it's Bitcoin, I know the amount in millisatoshis, I know the destination, uh, I know I have the invoice itself, uh, and there's like transaction signatures, payment hashes, all of this is encoded in that little QR code, right? Um, and so there's a lot of information, it's great, um, but what is what is the flow? Again, you just scan it and you make the payment, right? And this is great, but it doesn't scale for every use case. And, and it's what I was saying earlier. What happens if, let's just put it as an example, what happens if you are a famous streamer and you put a QR code in your stream and you have 10,000 people watching and those 10,000 people want to donate to you, they can't, right? They can't donate because one person will have a great experience and 9,999 others will fail because that invoice is already paid. So it won't work. For someone that's moving from, you know, tap your Apple Pay on the device and make a payment to Bitcoin and having this experience be their first experience is horrible because it, it won't work, right? Um, so it doesn't scale for all use cases. It's single use. So that's the first piece, right? If I use a normal Lightning invoice and I pay it, can't use it again. Um, and it expires. So I can create an invoice that lasts 10 days um, and you only have 10 days, but I can also create an invoice for 30 seconds. And if you don't pay it in 30 seconds, I need to once again be like, hey, give me an invoice. Please give me an invoice, right? So it doesn't solve all the problems. It's, it's good, but it doesn't solve all the problems. Um, and then 
in, I think it was actually to this day, November 20, uh, 21st, almost. So a year ago, uh, we released uh, the wallets that uh, I'll, I'll talk about it later. And specifically what the wallet did is each user in the wallet has a static QR code. So the innovation here was we were able to, to rely on a protocol called LNURL, which I'll right. talk about, and create QR codes that can be reused. So you can have one single QR code. Um, and so an example here is someone took their QR code and put it in their Twitch stream right here. And anyone that visits their Twitch stream can now make a donation, right? It's the same QR code. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and I wrote about this a year ago, basically saying um, those two properties, the single use and the defined expiration time, uh, are essential to the network. That's just how Lightning was made. It's essential that it works this way. Um, and it lays out a great experience for in real life. Like, you know, I go to the shop, scan a QR code, make the payment, done. That's great. Perfect. But it does not provide great flow, flows for online, right? For virtual payments. Uh, if you're making a one single payment, it's it's fine. If you're making hundreds, tens, hundreds, etc., you you just can't do that. Um, so how do we make that? How do we make that better? Um, so let's move back here. So here's the QR code. Okay, enter LN URL. So we all know Lightning, Lightning Network. I imagine most people here are familiar with Lightning, and um, the LN URL is a protocol. It's a set of standards similar to Lightning, which is a set of standards that everyone agrees with. Uh, but the LN URL is, you can consider it a layer on top. It is a UX protocol. Uh, and it's URL because it's, it's on the web. It's HTTP. It's, it's Lightning Network URLs, essentially. Um, and there's many sub protocols inside of it. So there's withdraw, channel pay, authentication. If you've ever scanned a QR code uh, in Lightning and received Satoshis, you were using this thing. You may not even know. It was just a QR code that appeared. Your, your wallet handled it. Um, and if you're, uh, what is it? If you're ever interested, there's a very in-depth set of documents. They're called LUDs, LNURL documents. And it talks about the many, I think we have 20, uh, you know, sub protocols with all of these many, many services that support it, many open source projects and so on and so forth. Um, so the one I want to talk about is the pay. Uh, and, and that's what's going to you know, bleed into the, the Lightning address. So what is LNURL pay? Um, and we go back to the flow of making a payment in Lightning, right? Once again, you have a QR code. Uh, but in this case, you see there's some more information here, right? First of all, I have this you know, image or whatever this is. It's a, a profile image, a, a product image. Um, I have the QR code. I see that I have a variable amount here. I don't have just 500 Satoshis. I have, I can say 50 to 50,000. I have a much longer description. And then I have an asterisk here that says, you know, accepts messages. Um, so this QR code, which is the LNURL pay QR code, which we'll talk about, um, allows for minimum and maximum amount. So I can say, hey, I, I'm willing to accept one to one million. Anyone can go and pay you 50, 5,000, one million. It, it doesn't matter. It's the same payment QR code. Um, you can put custom metadata, like I said, like I was saying, images, descriptions, and so on. Um, you can send a message with that payment. So imagine in a scenario for donations, if you ever wanted to donate to some to a streamer or something, right? You you want to say, hey, it was me, Andre. So you add that in the in the comment so that he sees he she sees it, right? Um, it's a static QR code, so you don't need to worry about it ex expiring or having to recreate it, right? Um, so you may be asking, like, why don't we use this more and how, you know, what needs to happen for this to be used? Nothing. This is used right now. All of the major wallets support it, period. Every wallet supports this. You can scan this QR code and make a payment. Um, so what is in this LNURL pay thing? So if I were to decode, it looks very similar, right? It looks a little different because it, um, and tell me if it's small, um, but uh, it looks a little different because it starts with LNURL1, whereas the other one starts with LNBC, but, you know, looks very similar. Um, and if I decode it, what it is, it's, it's a URL, right? Like I was saying, it's LN URL. It's just a URL. Um, and if I go to that URL, what I receive is a set of information. This big block here, by the way, is just an, a base64 image. So you can kind of, it's just a, a JPEG in code. Um, but what you want to pay attention to is min sendable, the minimum you can send to this QR code, the max sendable, the maximum you can send to this QR code, uh, whether it allows comments or not. Um, yeah, whether it allows comments or not. Uh, um, and at the very bottom, we have something called uh, the callback, which I'll, I'll explain in one second. So it's just a URL, right? That gets BESH32 is the name of the protocol. So it's a BESH32 encoded URL. 
and it just says, hey, this is what this QR code can handle, right? Um, so the flow, you don't actually see this, but the flow is you scan that QR code, your wallet is saying, hey, server, send me the information, you receive this information here, right? Your wallet says, okay, you can send from 1,000 to 150,000. Um, it shows you a nice little form that you fill it out, and then you can add a comment, and then you hit send, and the payment is done, right? So it's, it's a two-way trip, but you don't see any of that. You just see the single you know, QR code payment. Um, so what does that mean? It means that this is a static QR code in Lightning that you can pay, you can accept any number of payments anywhere from anyone for any amount that you decide with commenting support, right? So holy grail, like, wow, this is amazing. Um, how do we make it better? Um, what can we do with this? So at Zebedee, we, uh, like I was saying, each user has their own QR code and each user has, um, let's make, no. This is better. Um, and each user has uh, their own static QR code, right? So this is your page and anyone can have, like if you have a, an account, you have a page. So I love this one. I don't know who it is, BTC. In quoting others, we cite ourselves. Um, very deep. Um, but someone claimed this and this is their page and this is their QR code. And you can, don't do this, but you can tattoo this, right? This won't change. Uh, you can put this anywhere. You can put this on your keyboard. You can put this on your MacBook and like, oh, you want to pay me? Just like scan this. Um, you can put this on your Twitter profile, whatever it is, right? So that's one, one way that we can use these QR codes. It's great. It works. It's perfect. But again, how do we make it better? And specifically, I mentioned three main things, which was the QR code, the fact that it was single use, and the fact that it expired, right? So if, if you, we solved two of them. We solved the single use and we solved the expiration time. We didn't solve the QR code. This is still a QR code, right? Um, so what if instead of that QR code um, or a website, like I just showed you, the Zebedee website, you could use something like an internet identifier. An internet identifier is a protocol. Again, it's a specification. Um, but it, the most known internet identifier is your email. So andre at gmail.com, that's an internet identifier. It's username at domain, right, TLD. Um, so what if we do that? A and just a, a preface that I think is important to know. In the United States, we have things like Venmo, Cash App, all your banks, and et cetera, et cetera. They all speak dollars, right? They don't speak to each other at all. You have to create these massive, you know, interbank settlement layers and connections and protocols to, for example, I have $50 in Venmo, I can't send to Cash App. Can't do that. They speak the same language, but they can't. There's no dollar API that allows for that. Um, and so you have these very siloed, you know, environments where the entire purpose is to get you and your friends in and stay in so that you can make transactions there. Um, but they all, they're all dollars, right? And in, in the world where you're using open systems and open networks, they should all speak to each other. It just, it just makes sense. Um, so what if we could improve on that as well? So that's what the lightning address is you drop the QR code from that sentence. So instead of a static QR code that accepts payments, blah, 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 it's now an internet identifier. So it's like a email. Um, so we rolled this out in August. It's a open source protocol. Um, you can like it, dislike it, you can hate it. Does, doesn't matter to me. Um, it's, it's out there and um, you know, the, the response has been great and I'll talk about it, but what is, what is it, right? So it looks like an email and the same way that you can have, um, where was I? So let me get my, so let's get this guy, right? So I'm gonna copy this QR code and I'm gonna put his QR code here to, oh, I'm gonna put his QR code here to decode if the internet helps me, okay? So I'm decoding it and I see his information, right? So this is his QR code. Um, now you see that he has a lightning address here uh, already, you can already tell that. Um, but instead of this QR code, what if I were to just type his lightning address, btc at z oh, lightning decode, btc at zbd.gg, right? And it's the same thing. So essentially, uh, your lightning address is a human readable resolver for your static payment QR code. Uh, so I can send the payment to Andre at Zebedee.gg. I don't need to ask you for an invoice, right? Remember in Lightning, I don't get to just send it to you. I guess you could use things like key send, but that aside, I, I need to say, hey, give me an invoice so I can make a payment to you. Um, 
this sort of bypasses that, right? And, and it does things behind the scene. So um, it, if you've ever sent an email, same thing, right? You, if you just enter it and then you press send. Um, we built it in a way where you can self-host it. So if you're a private person and you want to own your keys and you want to own your coins and you want to do all of that, great. You can self-host it. It's just a standard. Um, you can run it just like you do on Gmail. You don't want to run your own email server at home. You want to use Gmail. Great. Gmail will handle all everything for you. Um, but you can also use these things called bridge servers where you're giving very granular uh, access. So uh, you're saying, hey, a bridge server, for example, is one that I run. It's called payaddress.co. And basically, I can say, hey, I want to claim, you know, Andre, this will fail. So, um, and I have a LND backend, right? And it's actually behind Tor. So I can put an onion address here if you'd want to. Um, and all that you're doing is saying, hey, if anyone tries to pay to Andre at payaddress.co, this is how you get an invoice from me. So if someone says, hey, I want to pay you, Andre, um, this server is going to go into my server and say, hey, Andre, someone wants, you know, give me an invoice for 50. And then it sort of sends that back. Um, so these are called bridge servers. You can think of these are like federated addresses, uh, servers, I guess. Um, and then we released this and I believe there was just two wallets that supported it at the time. Um, now you can, man, you can uh, create lightning addresses so many ways. Um, every single wallet supports sending to a lightning address. So all the wallets that you already have, um, probably support it. Uh, there's plenty of these federated addresses, servers that people use. Um, people started creating open source, uh, you know, self-hosted lightning address servers for personal payment pages. I, I don't know. People just create these things. Um, and it's great. So the response has been, uh, awesome. And so just to show a few things, um, you know, here is, uh, this is Breeze paying to a lightning address. Um, so you just, you just type, you just type, I want to pay 50 to Joko at BTC. Uh, here is, here I'm making a donation to the Sci-Hub um, using a Lightning address, right? And I just use uh, any of the wallets and, and I use a Lightning address. Um, here is the same thing. Here is uh, a wallet that's important. You know, they took it further. So an example here, this wallet created a contacts, right? So now similar to how you have emails, you now have contacts. And you can resend to that person on and on and on, right? Because uh, why wouldn't you? It's it's all your email doesn't change every day. Your Lightning address probably won't change every day. So um, you, I can just save that contact. Um, someone else built a browser extension where if you add your Lightning address to your Twitter profile, to your GitHub profile, to your Twitch profile, it'll automatically pick that up, and the browser extension will pop that out and say, "Hey, do you want to tip this person?" Um, Phoenix has added, Zebedee, of course, has added, Wallace Satoshi has added. Um, and it's funny because here's Nicolas Dorier, for those who don't know, he's the, the founder of, of BTC Pay Server, um, and you know, making a joke about how nowadays his his you know how you pay him is through his lightning address, which is Emperor Donate Nicolas Doria. And you know, making fun of back in the day we used to use Bolt 11 QR codes, right? Which is which is what's happening behind the scenes. Um, most notably, BTC Pay Server added it in the last version. Tons of work went into this. Um, they added LNURL and Lightning Address support. So anyone who runs a BTC Pay server already has a website, already has a web server. They can now have as many Lightning addresses as they want. So they can create for their own, for family, friends, business, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, there was a bit refill added, right? And, and so basically you can go anywhere in every way. So I just wanted to, to demo it. So this is a, um, let me see. Yeah, this is the Zebedee uh, wallet. Uh, on your browser. So if I were to uh, make a payment, usually I would, you know, get an, an invoice, copy that invoice, paste it here. So I'll go to QR code. I would paste it here, right? or I'd drop uh, an, Im an image here. Um, I can instead just pay. So I can pay, and I want to pay, you know, 500. And I can, so these users are all Zebedee users. So I can pay directly to Zebedee users because we're in the same network. But, um, you know, what I was saying between Venmo and Cash App, um, I can pay to someone at a different provider, right? And it finds that person. And then I can choose that person. And because this is just like email, I can send to multiple people, right? So I can send to multiple people at the same time. And then it finds that person in, in their other provider as well. And I'm doing testing bit depth. 
right? And I go to pay, I enter my thing, and it, the demo gods are in our favor. There you go, payment successful, right? So I didn't request an invoice, I didn't have to do any of that, um, and yet we made a very, like, you still exchanged invoices. Software did it for you. You didn't have to do it. So you're removing, you're abstracting all of these nuances from the user. And onboarding people with this is much easier than onboarding people with a 12 word seed phrase. They serve different purposes and they, you know, from, from the Zebedee side, we're trying to onboard 2 billion gamers. I can't onboard a 16 year old by giving them 24 words they, they can never lose. That is not how you onboard them. That is a very poor experience. You need to give them something that's familiar, that's useful, and then you help them go down the trajectory of learning about Bitcoin and learning about money and et cetera. Um, so, if anyone would like to try it, uh, you know, please check out the Zebedee wallet. It's very simple. And um, I should, oh, there we go. And I have essentially a bunch of vouchers here. So if anyone wants to take a screenshot or a photo, and then you can use these on the Zebedee wallet, and you can get um, a thousand, I think it's 10,000 sats actually. So I can send these around. There's 50 of them, and there's plenty for uh, everyone. So. Um, but if you have a Zebedee wallet, you can go to vouchers, you know, redeem, and you'll get some sats. And every user has a Lightning address already, right? That's how it works with Zebedee. You create an account. My handle is Andre, so I have Andre at Zebedee. And you can have John at Zebedee, Steve at Zebedee, right? Um, hey, go for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is Lightning Address. Um, it's been pretty wild because you put this out in August and then in less than 30 days, 80% hey. 80, 80 of the wallets had already added support for sending to it. Um, you know, and, and uh, I think twi Twitter debates aside, uh, it's been clear that people are interested in some version of this at least uh, because the onboarding experience is much better. Uh, sending and receiving Bitcoin is much better. Um, so hopefully it'll continue to evolve and we'll see it used more and more. Um, yeah, and so I'll stop there and open for questions. Yes. Well, we definitely don't want one person to own that, right? We want, so similar to email, you can run your own email server at home and you can use your own domain, right? You don't have to sign up with Gmail. You can do Gmail, but you don't have to. Um, if we force everyone to use one service, one service, even if it's just as a, a naming resolver, right? Like you were saying, um, this is now a honeypot, right? Like everyone is using this. And if it's not, a, and if there's a company behind it, there's likely incentives that need to be, whether, you know, are they earning revenue of some kind? Like, what is their, their take? Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, the one I'm talking about is the DNS. They've been playing the wallet that has actually been the host of the last couple of years. Yeah, mm. I yeah I, I don't know too much about Ethereum name service. Like, I, I know it, but I don't know the in intricacies of it. Um, I think it, if the, if the aim is to replace DNS, Right, like HTTPs and DNS and everything. Then, you know, let's let's go back. Like, I'm just trying to solve one piece on the Lightning side. To replace DNS with anything else is much bigger than this, right? So there's there's discussion about doing. Um, I believe it's uh, Dane. Uh, let's see if it's still here. Someone wants to do. Um, yeah, I believe it's still here. Consider Dane as an alternative to certificate authority. So this guy works at um, Handshake. And uh, he was like, instead of doing, you know, DNS certs and et cetera, use this other thing. And in my opinion, it's an uphill battle because you're not just trying to solve this UX problem, you're now trying to solve DNS. And that is a major internet infrastructure wide, you know, so. Your, your proposal is in this case, you're effectively replacing 
Yes. I've, I've been yelling pretty loudly. Ho hopefully they'll hear me. Um, yeah, yeah. So the Stripe integration is very different, right? It, it's it's very much internal, proprietary. Like, hey, if you have a Strike account, you can receive. Um, it's important to note that you're not receiving Bitcoin. Strike takes the Bitcoin that, that's received and credits you dollars. Uh, so it's a different offering. Um, but effectively removing, so you need to have a Strike username, right? So you need to have a Strike account and you add, add your username. What if instead of adding your username, you just added your Lightning address? Because then it didn't matter if you have a Strike account, or if you have a Zebedee account, or if you have your own account at home and you want to run your node, you have a BTC Pay server, right? It's, it's the same. Just like enter your email address and this is how I talk to you, enter your Lightning address and this is how I pay you. Um, that would be very effective. I've been screaming, but we'll see what happens there, yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. 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 So totally, we thought about the the cash, right? The, the dollar sign. Uh, felt anti-ethical to Bitcoin to put a dollar sign in there. No. It, uh, honestly, the the standard specifies an at sign. The RFC specifies, I believe, like I wrote it somewhere here. Um, yeah, it basically specifies if we wanted to stay as an, an a true internet identifier. We'd have to stick with it. Um, yeah, right here. So, address spec. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So, it's a local part at domain, right? So, we could have broken it. There's nothing telling us not to. Um, I think current tools and software that handle internet identifiers, like, you know, click to email and stuff like that, they can more easily evolve to handle a pay to flow. Rather than having to teach, you know, change all these software to be like, oh, if you see a, an, it looks like an email, but it has a cash tag in there. Also, this is now important, right? So that's a bigger jump, in my opinion. Um, but I don't think there was like a real, honestly, I saw in the spec, I was like, yeah, we should stick to the spec. That right? makes sense. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So that was the thought there. But could, could be wrong, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Technically speaking, you could have the same email and Lightning address, though, right? So this is, we have a few people have done that, right? So if you're, if you're smart enough and you're self-hosting your stuff and you're self-hosting your email or you have your email on Gmail, but you're using your domain, so Andre at Andre.com is still using email, Gmail's infrastructure, and that's my email, but I self-host my Lightning node and I have a Lightning address server on my, my house. And then if you try to pay to Andre at Andre.com, It'll go to that node. If you try to send an email, it'll go to Gmail, right? Yeah. So it's an, it's like open standard. It really depends on what you do. People have already asked us, like, why can't I use my domain on the Zebedee infrastructure? And I'm like, because I didn't know this was a use case. I didn't, I didn't know you wanted this. So I'm sure there's going to be more of these types. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I was looking for this kind of thing back in the summer, No, very, very different. Um, lots of pros and cons. So offers, so the QR code that you're used to in Lightning is Bolt, Bolt 11 is the name of it. Uh, and it's single use, it expires, all those kinds of things. Um, offers is the Bolt 12 specification. Um, and just like every specification in Lightning, you need to have at least two implementations that support it fully. So right now, C Lightning supports it. Um, I understand there's development on Eclair and Rust Lightning to support it. Um, LND has its own version ish of something, so it won't really be compatible. Offers is meant to be a replacement, well, not a replacement, it's a lightning native way, so it's not using the LN URL. So you're not on the URL layer, you're on the lightning layer, um, which would allow you to do similar things around, you know, paying, uh, you know, using a QR code many times, uh, or, uh, scanning a QR code to receive, right? So there are benefits, uh, 
there are also trade-offs, right? Uh, there's, if you're trying to use DNS to do something like, you know, Andre at Andre.com, your browser or your apps need to be able to resolve that. And if you don't go to the layer of HTTP, you can't resolve that. So you could do QR codes that are reusable, but you wouldn't be able to do lightning addresses as easily. Oh, Andrew, did it die? Oh. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do lightning addresses as easily without going up the stack. Um, the, it's, it's experimental, I'll say that. Um, and I think for, you know, LND runs 87% of the network in terms of the nodes. So it's an uphill battle to get a specification like that through and adopted. And then all the services and all the wallets need to support that. So it's not right that easily. So standards are hard. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're Yeah, you need a Lightning backend. Um, most Lightning backends need a Bitcoin node. Um, you can run a Prune node or something like that. Um, you, if you want to self-host everything, I would take a look at these options, to be honest. So LN Me is really cool. Um, and there's an example here. So let's see. Yeah, so here's an example. So this is just a web page that it's a simple server that connects to your, your Lightning node. And it provides you a lightning address and a page for anyone to pay you if you want to. So you say, oh, I want to pay, you know, a thousand sats for this message, you know, send, and then it's going to give me a QR code and do it. And then this little server, which, you know, you can spin up and run it, you know, here's the features that it has, how to install it, right? How to run it. Um, and this just basically hooks up to your lightning node. And this is done. It's built for you. You can read the source code. It's open source. Um, but it's done for you and it's, Super, super simple. Um, I would say the, the pay address is a good one. Um, if you just have a lightning node and you just want to get your feet, you know, your, your feet wet and like, okay, let's, let's see what this is like. Um, there's plenty of others. You don't have to trust mine. You can trust someone else. Um, but you can create, you know, Bitcoin at payaddress.co and say like, okay, I have an LND backend. These are the bridge service. So you don't even need to host it yourself. If you, if you're just trying to test it. Yeah, right. And it could be over Tor though, right? Okay. So you could host it over Tor uh, because the bridge supports Tor. If the bridge doesn't support Tor, then it won't. Um, so I guess my point is you don't have to go full blown out, right? Like maybe get a wallet that already has it, test it. Okay, cool. Works. I, I understand that I want it. Do the bridge server. Okay, a little bit closer to what I want. Maybe you just want to go full self-hosting. You can do that too. Yeah. There's uh, lightningadders.com has like most of the stuff. We, we consistently update it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. Do you, I think it's like, is my computer about to die? No, that's fine. Um, yeah, it's fine. So if you're using Gmail, you're trusting them, right? You're trusting that they will maintain your emails and if they implode, then your emails are gone. Um, if you're trusting uh, bit refill and you keep a balance in your bit refill account, you're trusting bit refill to not run away. If you have a Zebedee account and you have Satoshi Zebedee, you're trusting Zebedee won't run away. We're a custodial, oh, Jesus. We're a custodial service for a purpose, right? We're not solving the self-sovereignty aspect of Bitcoin. That if we were, we would be failing miserably. That's not, that's not what we're doing. We're trying to onboard gamers into this. And like I was saying, you need to provide great UX for that. Um, so with services like Zebedee or, oh, I can't see anymore, but um, with Zebedee, uh, LNTX bots, CoinOS, all of these are uh, custodial services that you, you know, you're trusting to some extent. Um, I wouldn't advise you, so for example, Zebedee, it is a gaming wallet. I don't want you to keep 100 Bitcoin in there. I don't want you to do that. Please don't. You, you, you'll be stopped before that, but um, we don't want to, you know, we, it's a gaming wallet. It's your, it's your pocket chain. It's 50 bucks. It's 100 bucks. It's less than that. Um, you should have other wallets. And because the cost of moving Bitcoin around is so cheap, you should have multiple wallets. Like moving a bunch of money from Venmo or from uh, Chase to Wells Fargo is not simple. You don't, you can't just scan a QR code and pay it. In Lightning, you can just do that and, and the money goes away. So um, the, the money gets transferred. So uh, if you're using a bridge server, all you're trusting is you're telling someone how to ask for an invoice from you. 
That's what you're telling them. Like you are giving a, a little bit of information. You're not giving them enough, but you're giving them a little bit to say, hey, if I'm trying to pay Steve, this is how you reach me. Um, if you're self-hosting everything, then you own everything. You're in the custody of the key. You own the keys, you own the coins, you own everything. Um, of course, a self-hosted approach is recommended, but it's not for everyone, right? Um, I don't run my own email server, so I don't know how many people do. Yeah, it's, it is. So um, hopefully, yeah. Yes. You're trusting. Yeah, the same the same way that if I send an email to Steve at Gmail, I'm trusting that Gmail will route that email to you and not to Steve blah 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 and re and read your email in this regard. So you're trusting that they will say, "Hey, someone's trying to pay you, not you or you." Like, give me an invoice. Yeah. So there's a little bit of trust to your self custodial wallet that you own. Yeah. So the bridge server doesn't have anything to do with the actual payment. It's just gather, getting the information from, like the invoice back from you. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Every everyone at W has their gamer tag at zbd.gb. Oh, this. Because it's just requesting. So, um, remember uh, the first QR code. You scan this QR code. You receive this information, yeah. right? And then the important piece. Oh, I actually never got to it. Uh, sorry about that. Um, the callback. So if I take this callback, right, and I copy it and I put it on my on my thing here, um, it's kind of small, but I have an amount here at the top, right? So what what LNURL and Lightning Address is doing is, if I'm trying to pay you ten and you accept from one to hundred, behind the scenes, my wallet is actually asking you for an invoice for that specific amount. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, give me, give me an invoice yeah, the software is doing that for you, right? But I'm saying, hey, I'm trying to send you 10. Give me an invoice for 10. You receive, I, I receive the invoice and I make the payment immediately. So it's a, that's why I was trying to tell you it's like a two-step, right? But it's behind the scenes. And so if I were to say an amount here, so this is my uh, my LNURL QR code here, right? And it's a URL. And if I add an amount here, and let's say I want to send, you know, 500 satoshis, millisats, and I enter, there you go. I just got an invoice. So this invoice pays my Zebedee account 500 sats. If I were to decode this, and I'll put it here, 500, right? And this is the destination, this is the invoice, right? So everything is there. Um, so it is it is a trick. It's like you're abstracting the user experience out, right? Like user, I don't need to ask you for an invoice so that I can pay you later. Right. I'm just getting the two software to talk to each other and get that done for you. Yeah. yeah. So that's the goal, to remove friction. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was. Uh, there's an example here actually. So, um, where is it? Where is it? I mean, the reason I ask the question is because, and, and this may be like the dumbest question of the day, but every time you spend Bitcoin, the capital. Is sure, sure. Lost. Yeah. So I, I don't understand why people are spending Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a, a question that's slightly bigger than the presentation. Um, but so in this case here, so if at every edge of the transaction, there needs to be someone that will do the conversion, right? So if you're trying to do the dollar, so whether it's in the beginning or at the end, someone has to convert from the Bitcoin to the dollar, right? In this case, this provider here called LNURL Pay Me, this, this person that we know, runs a service in, in Russia, which basically does that. It can receive in Bitcoin and it automatically credits your bank account in- It's like an FX thing. Yes, um, but you know, indie, right, person. It's not like a, a major business. But I, he in, introduced Lightning Address to his service. So with Lightning Address, I was able to make a payment that was 2,000 Satoshis, gets converted, and immediately gets settled as 70 
uh, rubles, right, Russian rubles, um, on their account. And we're working with uh, Bitnob in Nigeria, uh, who runs, uh, Bernard who runs Bitnob, and they want to do, um, so they want to do their username and their bank account at bitnob.com. So if you make a payment to Andre125, you know, your bank account number, it will automatically convert that to you, whatever currency your bank account is in. Um, so they are serving that FX as well. So short answer, yes, you can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. So if they had a lightning address, I could take dollars, because I'm a dollar company, sure. right? I'm, I'm long dollars in, in short euro. It, so I, I have to, can, I, can I use this technology? You, you, would need a, you would need a provider to do the, the switch. Yeah. If there is a provider that's doing that switch, very, yes, absolutely. Um, you can use it, this as the medium right, of, of exchange, but the, the providers are doing the flipping on either end. It, Yeah, <laughs> I, I would I would guess so. More more likely than not, providers will start. You know, ch you can choose what currency do you want to receive this on, right? It won't matter. Um, you can just use some HFT algorithms to do some you know on the spot trading and um, essentially have some. That's that's to an extent that's what Strike does, yeah. right? Um, so they have a credit line and they're like, okay, so they receive the dollars, they trade that for Bitcoin, they send the Bitcoin out. They receive the Bitcoin, they trade that for dollars and send the dollars out. Um, they're expanding to Europe as well, so I know they have Euro coming. So um, I imagine more and more providers will provide something of this sort. Um, and then you're removing the burden from the user saying, I'm not using Bitcoin, right? Now, whether the law will continue to say that they're not using Bitcoin, uh, you know, who knows? Um, but yeah, that's definitely a, a future. Yeah. It's, it's the same as stopping lightning. Uh, it's just a standard, right? Like, th there's no central point of failure. If, I guess I just saw the, the WAPI. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, something living on a server. Sure. That, if, if we are hosting your lightning address and we disappear, your lightning address will cease to like Not that. if you're self-hosting. No, no. Okay. If you're, yeah, yeah. It's like having, hosting your own website. Now, they could go in many lengths and, you know, call your domain provider and be like, you know, shut this guy down and then they'll cut your domain access so your DNS will no longer resolve to your server. But that aside, you know, you can run anything on your own and, and do that. Um, we are a money service business. We are, we have licenses and stuff, so they're not going to shut us down tomorrow, trust me. Um, but yes, it's, it, it's definitely a worry, right? Like if, so you would want to run your own server if you can. If you have the means to and you have the know-how to, I would very much advise doing that. Um, the same way you hold your own coins, like you should definitely run your own servers. Yeah. Why gaming and what is W for? What is Zebedee? <laughs> Zebedee is a um, recursive acronym and it means Zebedee empowers Bitcoin enabled digital economy engines. Um, we, we are infrastructure, we're fintech infrastructure for the gaming industry, and we focus on Bitcoin solutions, primarily payments, but more to come. Um, in a world where you have, you know, World of Warcraft with billions of dollar value in it as a siloed economy that you can only shove money in and you can never take money out, uh, in a world where, uh, um, Epic Games is making $2 billion on V-Bucks, you can never take money out, right? It's only in, in, in. Um, democratizing that money between these virtual worlds enables so much innovation, right? It, like, I, I feel like we barely scratch the surface. Like right now we're doing Bitcoin rewards in games, which has increased retention, metrics, uh, return on ad spend, everything has blown up for all the developers that we're working with. Um, now imagine if all the games were doing this. Imagine if every virtual environment whether it's web, whether it's a conference, whether it's a live chat, whether it's a game, had the same money, 
right? Because the internet works really well because everyone speaks the same, like TCP IP, HTTP, DNS, and things like that. Um, so if they all agree on Bitcoin and Lightning, then I can send you money the same way I send you a message. And in that world, you want Bitcoin to be the, the pipeline. And so we want to be the pipeline to provide those services for primarily games, but eventually, you know, any online world. Clearly. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. It, if, if I, you know, my kid wins Bitcoin in the game, is it KYC or is it not KYC? No, it depends. So uh, the wallet is... KYC free up until certain limits. So if you're if you're trying to use the wallet for you know hundred dollar transactions up and down every day, we have to as a money service business we have to have some form of understanding of what it is that you, who you are. Um, if you're just earning you know a thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand satoshis here and there playing mobile games and so on, you don't need to do anything. It's, it's like creating a Gmail account. You just yeah you know, um, yeah. yeah. 